This is your, this is your country. You just went back to it like a minute ago, right? Oh, okay, so how did the whole thing start? You and Dina were like, we have to work together again no matter what. No, I mean, they, I knew Tom and Brian from Next to Normal days because I did early versions of it. Like, like whom? The Doctor. I was, oh, I was yes. thought I was really young for it, but you know, I was grateful to work with them because I thought they were great. I, and I met them before. We did. Um, Brian wrote the book and the lyrics of a musical version of The Wedding Banquet that I did a couple readings of. I love that movie so much. Yeah, Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. The Wedding Banquet is about a Chinese guy that's gay and his parents don't know and they live in China and they keep trying to get him married. And but he's actually gay, and then finally they come over, and he sort of has to come out. And it's an amazing event movie. So you it's, played his American boyfriend? No, I played. I, there were. I think there were roles invented for the show. I don't think they're in the movie. This this gay couple and Jerry Dixon played my boyfriend. In the Stop reading. working with the same four people. <laughs> <laughs> Branch out. So Brian, so Brian wrote the book, and Tom was the music director of it. Oh, I see. So we had met then, and then a year or two later, we did. Feeling Electric, as it was called then, next to normal. So I knew, like, we had this really great thing. And then when they were separately, um, they were writing this for Adina, and then they also were writing it for me. And I didn't know about it until I got asked to do a reading. So they always had you in mind? Yeah. Oh, I love it. And ha so how did they, did they say, ooh, we wrote this role for you? Or they were like, hey, are you interested in doing the show? I don't remember if it was through Michael Greif or Brian. I don't remember who contacted me first, because it was, you know, it just sort of happened. I was like, of course I'm about to do a reading like this. You know, so it was, and that first reading was at the end of myself. And then, and it, we did like several readings over two years before we wound up doing NBC. But um, Jen Quella was a part of it early. And then LaShawns became a part of it sort of midway through. And then Jason Tam became a part of it midway through. But like James, James was late edition. James Snyder, yeah. He, yeah. he was on my show a couple weeks ago. He was late. He was like a last minute. Because yeah. they wanted him to do it, but he just, he just had a kid and yeah. he was in California or something, yeah, right? Was all it? Sorts of, yeah, and he couldn't leave New York. It's all very good. It is, if only right, and yet it all worked out. Okay, so hold on a thing. So when you finally got it, first like how did the show change for you? Like did your character change at all? Uh yeah, the, in the in the earliest version, Lucas had a rock band and was kind of just a blogger, kind of just it did, became I guess the the activism became more serious, more um, Grounded somehow as it, as it evolved. I think they were always a little conscious of trying not to infantilize them or, or make him sort of juvenile in some way, like to make him, you know, working in a legitimate way towards something that mattered and it wasn't just him being kind of, you know, a flighty liberal. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that was very important to, to, to balance against um, Josh in some way, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because Josh is a serious surgeon and Lucas. I mean, that, that were, there was some of that. It just seems so like obvious when you see the show, like, oh, of course you should be that. So we can see how shows evolve, that yeah. I didn't know that at first, but it totally makes sense if you be an activist. Also, it's so anti what Adina, I think yeah. we guys have seen the show. Spoiler alert, he's in the show. I got it. Well, do you know about Megan Hilty being in Little Shop? Did you know that story? No. <laughs> so, okay, so Megan Hilty is in Carnegie Mellon. She's like a senior. And she comes and she does leagues, you know, whatever that's called. You audition for like, casting people and agents. And of course, within one second, like, well, you're amazingly talented. They bring in for a little shop of horrors. And I'm like, you're Audrey. And she's like, let me get the job while she's still in college. She's like, my life is made. And, and two minutes later, her, they won't let her go? No, dear. Doctor, heal thyself. They called her two months later, like, hi, um, we just cast a Seymour, and it's Anthony Rapp. And she's like, I love him. I'm like, yeah, you look too young compared to him, so you're fine. Are you kidding me? You never knew that. No. She hates me. She doesn't like, hate you. No, not at all. No, she totally got it. They just didn't have a Seymour then, and she was literally twenty-two, and it would look oh, too wow. crazy. But it, I can't believe she never told you that. Oh, I never I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it a...